It is something that not many people thought that they could earn. But the Michigan basketball team had always believed in oneself. It was a goal from the very beginning. They broke every huddle of every practice and every post game with Big Ten champs. And now it is a reality. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Inside Michigan Basketball. I'm Matt Shepard. There's not many people who outside this Michigan basketball program thought there's any way they could hang a banner. But the Wolverines now have proved them all wrong. For the first time since 1986, at Chrysler Center, the Michigan Basketball Club can boast being Big Ten champs. They are co-Big Ten title holders with Michigan State and Ohio State. It still feels pretty darn good. The Wolverines return to Ann Arbor after beating Penn State in time to watch the final six minutes of the Michigan State-Ohio State game. With so much on the line, you could cut the tension in the team room at the William Davidson Player Development Center. The game was tied at 70 when Ohio State's William Buford put the Buckeyes ahead and sent the Wolverines bouncing off the ceiling. What I do? It seemed like forever for the Spartans to get their final chance with less than a second to go. But for Michigan, the wait was worth it. Ravenel guards the inbound pass. Here's Green. Michigan wins a share of the Big Ten Championship, the first for the school since 1986. What's really great about it is the way we start every meeting. You know, we say, you know, uh, good morning or good afternoon, good evening. We are Michigan. We value Wolverine excellence, and we're going to be, and they fill in the blank, champions. And today we got to do it with it all great moments after we became a champion. So it's really special to our guys. It is really special, special to the staff. And I, feel, I know the university feels the same way. I mean, it's kind of surreal right now. Uh, you know, the saying is those who stay. So I guess you stick around long enough, uh, good things will happen. It's just a will to win. And it started last year at the end of the Big Ten season, and it's carried over. Uh, you know, Trey wasn't there last year, but he's felt it. Um, it's been the presence in our locker room. Even, like you said, we've been changing back and forth in locker rooms and getting new locker rooms and, um, in the summer and stuff and to begin the year. It's just uh, it's that will to win and that culture change that we've tried to establish here uh, with this program and, and keep it going. It's, um, I don't know, it, I, think, I think we've established it now to where we can uh, you know, see this kind of success year in, year out. Just to be able to come in um, and play with a great group of guys my first year, and um, had the opportunity to win a Big Ten, a Big Ten, a regular season Big Ten title, and you know, going into the tournament with this type of um, momentum that we have, and, and the way that we're playing is great. There's a lot of sacrifice in being a good team, and and, and a great team, a championship team, and uh, what these guys do with between their classes, between their training rules, between the weight uh, room, waiting, didn't even have a gym to shoot in this summer, didn't have their own weight room, didn't have their own locker room. They just plugged along, and it's a great story about persistence with young men who really have a goal in, in mind. This team, this scene, will long be remembered by the coaches and players. Zach Novak with his shirt off, you know, going nuts, and you know, you know, he, he you know, he has never experienced that before. And we we know Zach is a you know quiet guy, and and um, you know, he's only like that when his Green Bay Packers are playing. So it was very good to see that, you know, all that emotion coming out of him, and. Just to have him, you know, just Buford knocking down that shot and everybody just going nuts, running up and down the hallway. And, you know, my sternum hurts right now. I can't even talk. I was able to talk, and right now I can't even talk. And, you know, it's just, you know, it's just, it's just great for us. We're hanging on every dribble, every, every shot. Michigan State scored. We're all, everyone's mad. Ohio State scores. You know, we're, we're cheering like it's, you know, the end of the world. And, uh, you know, he made that last shot. 
we were just kind of like, is this, like, this really is happening. So it's, uh, it's unbelievable. You could feel it was happening, especially as Buford, who we always uh, know very well in our scouting report. And when that ball went up and in, everybody just exploded. But then we still had the drama of how, much, how many times, how many seconds are back on the court. And sure enough, when we got the win, it was like uh, we had just won the national championship. Our, our kids really f were focused on this Big Ten championship. And it's such a big thing at the University of Michigan to do this. And uh, so it's uh, very rewarding for them. But I could tell you, I, I, I wish everybody could have saw what I just saw when that team uh, showed all their excitement. The Wolverines move forward knowing that whatever happens in the weeks ahead will take place on the court and not in the team room. But this was the night Michigan won a Big Ten title. It's special. It was one thing that a lot of coaches, great coaches, coaches a lot of Big Ten schools, I mean, really go to the Final Fours, win national championships, don't get a chance to say they're Big Ten champs. And I know we share it with two really good schools, but for us to do it the way we've done it uh, with a bunch of young men that really believe, it is special. Inside Michigan Basketball is brought to you in part by Absol Pure Water, delivering quality bottled water since 1908. And by State Farm, for auto, home, life, and banking. Get to a better state. Champions, here's the real thing right here. They keep their eyes on the prize. They are focused on what we have broke that huddle with every single day is Big Ten champs, the team, the team, the team. Gallup right to left with Michigan in front 54 to 37. Led by as many as 19, Douglas on a take, hangs off the small square and through. Tough shot by Stu Douglas. For Marshall takes it in the paint, leans in, runner good. New career high for Jermaine Marshall. He's got two dozen, and Penn State's within four. Hardaway against Jermaine Marshall. Spins away from a double team. Stop, pop from eight, give it to me. From the left wing, Tim Hardaway delivers. And the Wolverines lead by six again. We have our, our sights set on higher goals. Um, like I said, we're not satisfied. We don't get complacent. You know, sometimes we get ourselves like we were complacent there in the middle of the second half a little bit, but uh, we close out games and we're just trying to build momentum in the Big Ten tournament. We're still we're staying focused. Ever since our lack of focus against Purdue, I think we've uh, kind of prioritized our goals again and, and where our focus should be. So it, we're, we're making strides. We just wanted to control what we can control. Um, I thought we did a great job in the regular season, put ourselves in, uh, in position to be in position, as Coach said uh, uh, in his post-game speech. Um, I think uh, we, we, got, we don't want to stop playing, you know. Uh, we we want to make the season as long as we can. How good do you feel about this team's chances moving forward? No, pretty good. You know, I think we got some. We're getting some guys clicking that are just really, you know, starting to play their best ball at the right time. Uh, guys are just the level of focus the last week, week and a half. You know, after that Purdue game has been unlike we've had. So it's uh, not to say we didn't, weren't focused before, but you guys are just taking it up to the next level, which is you know, this what you got to do at this time of year. You've been impressed with your team most of this season. The way they were able to close things out today after this team, you know, crawling yeah. back to within four had to make you extremely impressed. Well, first of all, Penn State has done this virtually with everybody here. They have a 20-point win over Purdue. Wisconsin was maybe a game like this. Uh, I, 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 Illinois, they end up beating here. They've been able to do some good things against some teams, and uh, we really feel fortunate to get the win because we knew they wouldn't give up. Uh, and our kids really played hard. So it was a good win for us to finish in this position. Um, I'm happy for our team. I'm happy for the university, everybody. This is a thing that uh, we dreamed about when we first got here, at least being in a position to be a Big Ten champion. We spoke earlier about the importance of having an above 500 record on the road. First time that's happened since 1994. That has to be gratifying. Yeah, I think there were some pretty good players in 94, too. Uh, Travis Conlon maybe being one of them. We, are, we really feel good about that because you know, it takes a while. We got off to a slow start, and I, I, I don't know if I'm completely accurate, but true, ro uh, true road games, and I still think Oakland's sort of a road game, but um, true road games, uh, we lost our first three, and then we ended up winning five of our next six. So that really says a lot about the constitution of these, these guys. How about the balance that you had today? Four guys in double digits, and then Stu Douglas had nine. He was right there on the free. Stu, Stu is playing at such a great pace. But uh, today, I think it was a lot about Evan Sumatras. Jordan got in foul trouble, and Evan made shots that he was making early in the year. He's putting in a lot of extra time, 
at his game, just like Tim. It's contagious, and uh, it paid off. But you have 23 wins now. What makes your team dangerous, whether it be Big Ten tournament or NCAA tournament time? Oh, I, yeah, I don't think we're. I, I think we're just a bunch of guys that maybe people would look at us, and we might not sometimes pass the eyeball test in warmups. And uh, that that's. I mean, we we played against good teams. I think we have a lot of respect from who we play, but uh, you know. If we play good defense, good team defense, block out every time, and then obviously we got to shoot the ball well. We got to shoot the ball like we did today in order to get the win. Like you did against Illinois. A couple of big jumpers late when they're creeping back into it. Zach Novak and Tim Hardaway, who a lot of guys might say, hey, you turn it over twice in a row, you get flustered, and you're, you start sagging your shoulders, and yet both of them make big jumpers. That was, that was a really big place for us that. That Tim had, we had the three turn, I mean turnovers in a row. We had a five-second count, and then we just handed him the ball twice. And uh, as a result of that, we uh, we we got ourselves where they scored, they scored, they scored, and all of a sudden a 12-point lead is a six-point lead. That's a big difference with three minutes to go. And uh, Tim made the big jumper when we had to make it. Uh, that shows what he's made of. Congratulations. All right, thanks, Matt. Predicting the future. Michigan has not had great success in this building. Matter of fact, they've lost their last 13 in a row here. Not since 1995 have the Wolverines walked off this floor with a victory. I remember 1995, and that was a long time ago. Also going to Chuck E. Cheese's. So uh, we had to, to get that win. Leonard against Smotrich lowers the shoulder. Knocked away by Smotrich. Picked up by Burke. He'll sprint into the front court. And just... Hey! Oh! How about Woo! that? He came out. You know, with a different mindset tonight. We got out um, on them early in the game. And, you know, in the second half, Tim hit some big shots, you know, when we needed them most. And it allowed us to get the win. Right side, Novak. Touch pass. Hardaway for three. Bang! Very aggressive. Just, just um, you know, just seeing what, taking what the defense gives us. And, you know, I'm just trying to crash the boards. We're not that athletic of a team. But, you know, I just feel like if we, um, if we all just crash and, just try to get rebounds and just limit them to one shot opportunities. Anything can happen for us. Now Burke on a drive. Stop. Oh, yes. Morgan stuffed the throw. Time out, Bruce Weber and the Illini. During the contest, Trey Burke had 21 points, but maybe more importantly, five assists. The five assists give him 143 on the season, a new Michigan freshman record, breaking the old mark set by Gary Grant. I give a, a lot of that accomplishment to my team. You know, without them making big shots, it, it wouldn't have been possible for me to break the record. So, you know, with, with the guards and, you know, Jordan Morgan and everyone making big shots down the stretch each and every game, you know, you know that's what happens. With the 11-point win in Champaign-Urbana, the Wolverines make sure that they do not lose back-to-back -back games all season long. As a matter of fact, in the last 14 times they've lost a game, they've always bounced back. Pretty impressive for a mentally and physically strong Wolverine club. We hate losing, and, you know, I, I just, I, I think when you hate it, you, you know, you're not going to go through that twice in a row. Just coming in here, just winning by double digits, digits all it really um, says a lot about our team, and you know, it just gives us some energy and focus going on. Well, I know your teams haven't been part of the entire losing streak here in Champaign-Urbana, 13 consecutive, but your first win here since 1995, how does it feel? Well, it feels great. You know, I know a lot of teams have come back out of uh, Champaign with losses, and it's, a, it's always winning or uh, 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 losing on the road is always tough because you travel back, you think about it. It'll be a happy uh, flight back for us because we, we really play good basketball. It reminded me a lot of, of our, our earlier wins on the road and even our home. We controlled the game. They made runs. We still controlled the game even when they made runs. So that was good for us. You talked about a couple of players. Trey Burke in the first half owned everybody. Best player on the yeah. floor, I thought, in the first 20 minutes. And by the time the night was over, five assists gives him 142. That's a new freshman record breaking the one held by Gary Grant. <laughs> Gary Grant was a great player, too. And, uh, so now that was he's really had a great year. Uh, we wouldn't be certainly where we are without him. And uh, you know, but you know what? He doesn't care about any of that. He just wants to win basketball games. He wants that the ball in his hands, and he wants to direct those, that team. And if that last shot he took in the first half, in the second half, it went down. That I don't know what it was, but it was one of the sweetest moves I've seen. He had a lot of ooh, didn't have all the ah, but it was a heck of a move. Yeah, it was an unbelievable move inside. A final thought: when you see them make a push, you guys are up by as many as 13 in the opening half, up by eight at the break. You knew they were going to make a run. And each time it seemingly 
they, they made that run. Tim Hardaway answered, and he had his second double-double of his career. I, think, I thought in the first half it was Trey that was answering the second half. Tim was incredible. Went to the foul line, knocked him down. You know, he's had, he hasn't had a great year at the foul line. He's at 70% or something. He's the guy that shoots like that should be at an 80. And then, of course, he's had his uh, shooting uh, problems this year where he hasn't been as consistent that he's like. That young man has practiced so hard. Every time that this week was, was a week where they had off. I hear, I hear the ball bouncing, the gun is going out there, he's shooting, he's shooting, he shot, he made 82 out of 100. I said, Tim, you made 82 out of 100 threes, there's nothing broken, just believe it, put it in, have faith in yourself, he did today. Well done. Thanks for your time. All right, thanks, man. Inside Michigan Basketball is brought to you in part by AT&T. When you can go faster, you are free to do more. AT&T, get it faster with 4G, rethink possible and by the University of Michigan Health System and uofmhealth.org. At a place of extraordinary medicine, what you see is how amazing life can be. Immediately following last week's Purdue game, Chrysler Center was shut down as the final stage of this massive renovation project was shifted into high gear. We have 166 days till the west side is done. And the west side is the piece that we really need to use for football. So we have about 166 days to get that done to use for football game days. And then there's 239 days until we're done for the uh, east side, which is uh, the northeast entry. And that's right prior to basketball season. So uh, we've got basically August 15th for football season. They're substantially complete. And the other side will be around November 1st. The arena's exterior walls have been removed. So the concourse can now be widened up to 20 feet. The seating bowl is being protected from the outside work, but there will be four more sections of Lowe's Champion boxes added. A club section is also being added on the concourse level, which will open in January. What you're going to see at the end of it is new northeast entry uh, where the old steps used to be will now be a grand entry into Chrysler Arena, which has an escalator, has elevators, have stairs going up onto the concourse. And then the concourse will be widened. You'll have um, a Hall of Honor area that will honor all the former student athletes who have been inducted into that. Around the concourse, all new, brand new concessions. All 29 Michigan sports will be showcased on the concourse, while a new television production studio and press conference facilities are being added as well. I think everybody that walked in the arena for the first time at the beginning of this basketball season was wowed. I think it's going to be a thousand times more than that. Wowed when they walk into that new grand entry with all of the interactives that we're going to have. It's going to be like walking into a brand new arena because you kind of you walk around that old dingy concourse, and now we'll have a brand new arena that'll be um, bright. It'll be uh, things for fans to do. We're going to have a kids area, uh, and so it's going to be uh, something for everybody. It is really going to be something, isn't it? All right, the Michigan women were in Indianapolis last week at the Big Ten Tournament, hoping to pad their NCAA tournament resume. Anthony Palladano tagged along. The Wolverines opened up the tourney looking for revenge against a team that knocked them out last year, Illinois. Michigan's defense took the fight out of the Illini early on, holding them to just 20% shooting in the first half, and at one point allowing Illinois just a single free throw in over a 10-minute stretch helping them build a 29-16 halftime lead. 11, and here's a steal by Thompson on the inbound. She glides in, layup, yes! In the second half, it was U of M's offense that was getting things done, as Michigan shot a blistering 54% from the floor. Courtney Boylan led the Wolverines with 17 points, while Kate Thompson added 13 off the bench in the 68-53 victory. The win over Illinois marked the second time in the Kevin Borseth era that the Wolverines had reached 20 wins. Up next, an opportunity to reach another mark, a fourth straight win over Ohio State. The Mason Blues' good fortune against OSU continued early on. Carmen Reynolds and Rachel Sheffer hurt the Buckeyes in transition, helping Michigan to an early 14-9 lead. And Ryan with a rebound ahead of Reynolds. Reynolds behind the defense, gliding in, layup right hand, good. With the Wolverines down three at the break, Ohio State opened up the second half with an 11-0 run, led by Big Ten Player of the Year, Samantha Prahalas. The Buckeyes led by as many as 16 in the second, but the Wolverines clawed their way back to within five, but their comeback falls short 
as U of M falls 57-48 and has to hope their 20-11 overall record is enough to get them into the NCAA tournament for the first time in over a decade. We think we've done a good job. Our RPI is good. Our strength of schedule is good right now. It's up to the committee. We think we've built a case for that at this point right now, but unfortunately we can't do any more than uh, where we're at at this point, so it's kind of a wait and see for us. For Inside Michigan Basketball, I'm Anthony Palladano. Anthony, thanks. We wait on pins and needles to see if Michigan is selected for the NCAA tournament. We find out March 12th. We thank you for joining us on this edition of Inside Michigan Basketball. We invite you back next week. We'll recap how the Wolverines do in Indianapolis in the Big Ten Tournament and see where Michigan is selected for their seating in the NC2A Tournament as well. Until then, I'm Matt Shepard. Go Blue. And they deserve it. We all deserve it. The coaching staff, the university, everybody deserves what we've gotten so far. Let's go get some more. How we play? Right. How we play? Smart. 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 Sm